Hello everyone and welcome back for my final overview of uh, our custom Redis server implementation in C++. In this video, we completed all the coding part. I just want to walk to what we made and my thoughts and like what can be improved or like what was the goal, how we achieved it and stuff. So. Uh, you can access my server, um, my latest server in GitHub repository. I will, I have the link in my YouTube videos. Uh, you can check the readme to get a real under, uh, basic understanding of what is going on. Uh, it's a basically lightweight that is compatible in memory data storage in C++. Um, just, uh, Basic implementation, but we used a uh, Redis protocol, Redis serialization protocol, which you can check on the website. I suggest you do if you are if you are interested on these programs. And we implemented some of the common commands and key value list and hash commands, which we will go deeper uh, in a little while. Uh, my Structure for the repository is quite simple. I have include for header files, source for C++ files, and of course some uh, concepts, make file, read me, and test bash script. Uh, I used C++ uh, 17 or later. You can just use make file. It should be fine. You can just say make or manually type as you like. And usage is very similar to the no, uh, real one. You can just call the executable or call the executable and give it a port number. If you don't give it, it will have 6379 as a default port. Also, we have uh, persistence, which we have our dump.my with this database file, uh, which is saving the database basically every five minutes or when you uh, exit the program also we have graceful shutdown so we can always have the data uh, actual it will be safe and you can say some simple comments which we did the testing in the last video so i will not go too much on that of course we have some comments that we are sp we support i will Go into them in the little bit, and we have concurrency. We have threads. We can handle multiple clients. We have synchronization, data stores, and more. And I think we can go to concepts and use cases. Uh, our concepts. I made a list at the beginning of the video. Says you can go and watch the videos to get more understanding, but. So basically explain, we have TCP, IP, and socket programming. So we can connect to the client and make have a server. We, using, we are using concurrency and multithreading, mutex and synchronization, data structures for hash tables and vectors. We have parsing and Redis protocol, file input output, persistence, signal handling, command processing and response formatting, singleton patterns, bitwise operators, which is really cool. And of course, standard libraries for C++. We created three main server. Uh, you can see in the include and source folders, we have Redis command handler, Redis database, Redis server. And we will go to the pod later. We have ping, echo, and flush all for common commands. Ping is just to see if the server is online, which is useful. Echo is echo, as you know. Um, we have set, get, keys, type, del, or unlink, expire, rename commands for key value operations. We also have list operations, lget, ln, lpush, which I guess lget is my custom implementation. It has like l range in this, but I wanted to be able to get the list, so I just called lget. And of course, we have other list operations. We also have hash operations, which is a little bit more complex, but still cool. Also in the repository, I have my bash script for testing. You can try, you can test the common comments as yourself. You can use my uh, 
custom Redis client, which I also made videos is about that. Or you can try with real Redis client, which is they are both working quite fine as intended. That's because we used uh, protocol specific protocols and it teaches you a lot how it everything works because I just used the uh, Redis protocol too, which we are checking for asterisk, dollar signs, colons, minus, plus, and it is a little bit complex to understand maybe, but when you understand it gets easier and you can uh, have it as you want on your way. So I am in the GitHub code spaces and as you can see, uh, you can open it to the code spaces as you like. So I program this on code spaces. I tested on code spaces. I also tested on other platforms, but yeah. And yeah, this is the same with me. And if we go into the coding, put stuff uh, in the main, you can see we are checking for the port. We are getting the arguments. And if we have arguments, we are, uh, we just, we are just looking for the port at this point. And of course we are checking for our, our database. If a dump exists from previous, uh, previous usage. And we also have persistence and we are getting the database every 200 seconds, which means five minutes. And this is basically how main works. And of course, it is calling server for server connection. And then we are going to database for uh, getting the dump my RDP file. So if you go to the Redis server class, in the header file, as you can see, uh, we have atomic. So it means when we are running, we can have multiple clients. And even if we stop running one, we can continue with others. And this Redis server class basically it takes care of run and shutdown. Uh, and of course we have setup signal handler, but that's uh, not that. Uh, not now. So in the run, we are opening a socket and we are accepting connection from the clients. Uh, if you want more details on the coding part, you can go always check the video series. I have 14 videos, so yeah, it took some time to do all of this. And we also have shutdown here. And basically we are, when we shut down, we just uh, get, uh, save the database, dump it and shut down. And of course we have signal handlers and uh, global pointers and stuff. So like I said, details are on the videos. And our next class I would say is the comment handler, which is processing the comments we see from the client. I would say this is a long C++ file. It could have been shorter, but uh, we are using, as I said, this protocol. So when we get answer in this format, we, let's say we have asterisk two, which means we have two elements and return new line and dollar sign four, which means the next we have two elements and the next thing has four characters. And when you see dollar sign four, you know, there's four characters coming up, return new line pink. And this is our comment. Again, return new line dollar four, which means we have another four characters thing coming up and it is test. Our command is test. So basically we have a function so we can parse the Redis comments. And yeah, we're just checking how it starts and stuff. Like I said, more coding on the other videos. This is just overview and we are tokenizing and parsing. And we have uh, some handlers, comment handlers for common comments like handle ping, handle echo, handle flush wall, also for key value operations and um, hash operations, which are called in post process command function. 
we are checking after we are we parse the uh, comments, we get the tokens, and we are checking for comments what that comment was, and then that if it's ping, we need to call the handle ping comment in common comments, and same as key value operations, list operations, and hash operations. Basically, this is where we are handling the comments simply. And finally, we have the Redis database class, which is where the real magic happens, the database part. Uh, we have flush all to clean all the database. Very important. We have key value operations, like that's, we called them in the command handle, the process command, but this is where the uh, function heads, but we will also go to the bodies. Uh, we are using mutex and we are using unordered maps to key value storage. Unordered map and inside of that we use vectors to list storage. And finally we have unordered map inside another unordered map for hash storage. And of course we also have expire command which is working. So we have another unordered map that just uses chrono. So we can expire the uh, keys we don't we want them to be expired so and of course we have dump and load to get the database from a file uh, i guess we can go into the c++ file and see what we are doing again this is a kind of long source file but uh, let's go it basically uh, like i said in the command handler when we were processing uh for pink not the pink button maybe like for the set when the command is set we go to handle set and handle set knows what it is looking for which will have a vector of tokens and it will also be needing the latest database it will check for the token size if it because we know set requires key and value but if you don't know how we know that we used uh, this is commands database and when we say set uh, let's set here you can see what is it what it is looking for uh, it is for holding string value uh, we can see what its the options can be what it is waiting for the patterns and what we used and what we need to apply so uh, as you can see if we don't have a key and value we will just return an error saying that we want that and that's also what we want to return is plus ok which means um, simple string reply because as you can see plus is simple string in this protocol too and we need to say simple string reply okay so plus is for the simple string saying to the client this is a single string that you are receiving and okay for saying okay the key was set basically or if there's a problem it will just return uh, nil and that's for minus and we will go into the database class and we will use this check the set command which is here and as you know we have the key and the value and for that we will have a key value store which we will give index key and value will be the value so this is basically how it works between the command handler and database and we have another we have lots of commands that follow the same way for common uh, key value list and which were like <laughs> which took time to implement and we have also very simple persistence i can talk about now uh, do we have it here no it's fine and we use dump and load functions but basically what we have in the 
uh, file which I will show. We have uh, items start with key meaning key value, items start with L meaning list, and items start with H which stands for hash. And when we see them in the dump file, we can say, okay, this starts with K, we know it's a key value, if it starts with L or H, vice versa. This is for dumping, and same way, when we want to load it, that is what we have, kind of. Uh, we, will, we know we will have a key, key value store on our dot map, and it will have an index of name, which will be the value of Alice, for example, or index of city, which will have the value of Berlin, for example, and same for lists. List name fruits will have apple, banana, and orange as its values. We have key colors, which will have red, green, and blue, RGB. And hash will be a little bit more complex because we know it has it is an unordered map inside of an unordered map. So for the user 100, uh, we know the user's name is Bob. The user's age is 30. And the user's email address is bob at example.com. Just random example. And we can have another user, 200. And again, name, age, email. So when we load from a database, we are checking for key LM, um, key LH, and then continue according to that. I also mentioned some uh, really motivating feedback I received on this project, which meant a lot to me. Uh, one of my uh, peers told me I had a very great readme with clear architecture and supported comments which I did spend some time trying to explain how it works. Uh, I They said I had a good, good Git history, which you cannot see in this part, but it was fine. And they also said that this database is amazingly well-designed class. And same for this comment handler, which I am very happy to get that. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's just a simple, but it is working. I guess that's why they liked it. I am also happy with that. Uh, there were also some suggestions, like including more design patterns beyond just singleton, because right now we just use singleton. And they also mentioned possibly using factor pattern for the database, or composite for a more scalable command handler. And I agree. Uh, those will make next steps uh, for refactoring or evolving the project. And they also said the Redis server could be broken down into smaller helper functions because, uh, yeah, I just have maybe too much functions in one C++ file, which can be divided. Uh, yeah, it's another great point for future cleanup. Uh, but I will leave at this point. You can always access to GitHub and do whatever you like. Okay, just to clean everything up, you can access the repository in my GitHub account. You can check how it works. You can check the playlist for how we implemented all these steps. And it took some time. Like I said, 14 videos and they are all between 20 to 40 minutes. You know, like. Yeah, uh, always check documentation. It helps a lot to understand what is going on. And if you like this series, please uh, like or subscribe as you like. And if you have any questions, you can always ask me on comments. Thank you for watching and see you next time.